Cape Patterson, a pocket of Gippsland abundant in beauty. But behind the beauty is a rich history, a story that stretches from the past into our future. We are all a part of that story. The future isn't written yet, but what do we want that future to look like? We're sitting here in Bass Coast on the edge of the Streslecky Ranges in South Gippsland and it's a beautiful part of Australia. It's got good rainfall and deep rich topsoil. It's a food bowl for this country. And if we look one way up the coast, we can see Mount Oberon and Wilson's Prom. And if we look the other way, we can see Cape Woolamai towards Phillip Island. It's an amazing part of the coast. It's a wild part of Victoria and it's a beautiful place to be. We pay our respects to the Boon Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation who've managed this coastline for tens of thousands of years in a sustainable way. We're currently on Yalak Balak country, which is a clan group of the Bunurong, and my connection to that, I'm a descendant of the Yalak Balak. Protecting our coastline and protecting our cultural heritage is what I do. We don't protect it, it takes our stories away. We've lost a lot of stories, and with cultural heritage, we're able to gain those stories back. So we know where our old people have walked, we know what they've eaten, we know what they've done. They still walk this country, they still do. I still feel them and they're here. And we need to, we need to be mindful of our old people that were here before us. Working together, using our culture and our cultural practices to look after country, it is about working together and it belongs to us all now. We all got to protect it because we are one. I'm here at the Cape at Cape Patterson in the community farm and we're sitting on this beautiful piece of coastline which has this incredible history we've heard about, the Boon Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation who lived here for tens of thousands of years and managed these resources sustainably. We also have this amazing paleontological history. The first fossils found in Australia were given up by the rock platforms around this area. I think when I was a kid growing up on the coastal areas around here, I used to think that rocks like this had been washed in from out to sea. Uh, I now realise they actually fall from the cliffs. Here at Cape Patterson, we can see the two main rock types in this area. We've got sandstone here in the foreground. And just over there in the water, we can see that dark rock, which is actually basalt, which is volcanic lava. So this is our basalt here that's going through this dike. And then it goes under the sand and into the cliff over there and goes up the cliff. So that's telling us that there's been a volcano here. These are very significant sites and there's only three of them in the world. There's, uh, there's here at the Cape Patterson Interlock area, there's the Otway coast down on the west coast there. And there's a couple of sites uh, on the north coast of Alaska, which are what we call polar dinosaur sites. They are areas where dinosaurs lived within the polar circles. We often think of dinosaurs as, as being these huge lumbering giants that were trundling through tropical rainforests. These were not. If you were a Quantosaurus here at Cape Patterson, you'd walk about five days that way, you're in Antarctica. So uh, the environment was quite different then. Uh, so there was the trees and forests, but we never had the heat waves like we have here today. For them, I guess uh, 15 degrees would have been a hot day. Uh, minus 20 would have been a cold night and the whole place would probably ice over for winter. The Bunurong Coast is a fantastic place for all sorts of biodiversity. There's been a lot of change over the past. We can say that uh, from the evidence, when we had a warmer global climate, we had intense growth of, uh, of plants, of forests down here in these southern parts. So the effect of that has been that it's taken an enormous amount of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and buried it underground in the form of coal. Coal was discovered uh, in Victoria for the first time just near this place, which allowed the development of Victoria's first coal mine at Harmers Haven, just up the coast from here. Those communities formed and worked extremely hard with the best technologies of the day to provide the energy that powered the early development of our towns and cities and communities. 
This uh, location, as beautiful as it is, it was also the site of the very first commercial coal mine in Victoria. Coal was first discovered uh, in Victoria right at this location or just around the corner from where we are at Harms Haven by uh, William Hovell back in 1826. To put that into a context, Victoria at that time was had a real problem and that is how to fuel industry. One thing that I think needs to be understood is that coal miners and those who promoted coal mining were not without values. A lot of the incentive for uh, providing or finding coal and mining it was because the forests around Melbourne were being denuded. Those communities worked incredibly hard to provide that energy source which powered the early development of, of uh, our towns and, and cities here in Victoria. But at the same time we also have now these, these issues around climate change, so we need to pivot. It's a time in history when we need to move quickly onto cleaner technologies and renewables. What we've tried to do here at the Cape is write that next layer of history by building this sustainable village where all the houses are energy efficient, they're passive solar designed, they've got good orientation, insulation, shade structures, they stay warm in winter naturally and cool in summer naturally. They have efficient all electric fit out, heat pump heating and cooling systems, induction cooktops, they're powered by solar energy systems and all the houses have provision for electric vehicle charging so people can charge an electric vehicle from the power of the sun. This means that this community operates on the fraction of the energy of a conventional community. It's actually a clean energy power station producing a surplus of clean energy and pushing that back onto the power grid so that can be used by other communities nearby. It also means the houses have no gas bill, tiny electricity bills, and 25% of the houses here have purchased electric vehicles, so for them, a petrol bill is a thing of the past. The other thing that's skyrocketed lately is the cost of food. We've got floods and international factors, and it means that we're paying over $10 for a lettuce at the supermarket. Uh, here at the Cape, we're pioneering urban farming, so we have this big state-of-the-art urban farm that I'm sitting in, and we have a full-time professional farmer who's overseeing that food production and working with our residents to teach them how to grow food. South Gippsland is on the cusp of becoming a nationally significant clean energy hub. We have these big offshore wind projects that are planned, widespread uptake of solar through our communities and we're going to be seeing battery storage. So we're in a position to lead the country. The Cape Village is obviously a step in the right direction. It's an example of the uh, low energy future that we need to be achieving. Down the coast there we can see the wind farm. We've got uh, big waves coming in uh, from the Southern Ocean today which have potential for use as wave energy. They're looking after country. Everything they do to the water source, to, to the electricity, everything they do out there, I'm amazed. That's how we need to learn to live. And if we could all live like that, we'd be so much better off. That's what we need, we need to look after country. Coal miners were about meeting the needs, uh, but the broader community at large wasn't devoid of some of the value. And that's why it's important when we have wonderful uh, developments such as the Echo Village, that in themselves, they are not the end product. It's a point along the, the progression to being more sympathetic to the world that we live in. Don't lose the values. You might lose your methods as time goes on, but the values are important. We live in a beautiful part of the world. We need to be decarbonising really rapidly and tackling climate change. Uh, we want to be tackling these food challenges that we're starting to see. And here in South Gippsland, we've got the communities, we've got the brain power, we've got the will, we've got the buy-in, we've got all of the resources and the natural capital to be able to be a real leader for Australia in the future, and it's really exciting. What's stopping us?